Good afternoon again. Well, as you can see, I'll be talking about the recent advances in pet ready pharmaceuticals. Well, I don't have to, you know, uh, preach about PET. All of you know that PET is an invasive nuclear Im uh, imaging modality that involves administration of PET radio pharmaceuticals and subsequently imaging of the radioactive pharmaceuticals by distribution and kinetics. And PET has unmatched capability of generating images of the body function and metabolism. And you can see these are the SNM image of the year two uh, 2012 using Gallium 68 Dota Talk. Uh, and the management of uh, liver cancer. Uh, it's worth mentioning that more than 95 radio pharmaceuticals are produ uh, produced are used for diagnostic and less than 5% are used in uh, therapeutic purposes. PET raised radioisotopes. Uh, we have what's so-called common PET radioisotope which has fluorine 18, carbon 11, nitrogen 13 and oxygen 15 and less common PET radioisotopes which are iodine-124, bromine-77, all the way to technetium-94M. There are something called ultra-short-lived uh, PET radio uh, isotopes, and they can be carbon-11, uh, carbon-10, oxygen-14, and fluorine-17, and it was used in a human a uh, long time ago. Uh, all of you know that uh, fluorodeoxyglucose, glucose, which is named the molecule of the century because it's been used heavily in all the PET centers around the world. Uh, also, it has a similar structure to the glucose, and this compound is used uh, in PET due to the metabolic or metabolism of glucose by the human body. And uh, recently, FDG was also used to study a plant uh, defense system. It's not only in human, it was also used in plants. FDG was developed in 1976 by Professor Wolf and his group uh, at Brookhaven National Lab. And you can see these are the first images done using conventional gamma camera. And these are uh, first images done using uh, PET, uh, regular PET uh, scanner. Uh, since 1976, it was developed all the way to uh, what's so-called Hamaker method, which is uh, developed in 1986, and by using this method, we can produce FDG in 25 uh, minutes, and it was called cup of coffee synthesis procedure. And this is the, the, the way they produce uh, FDG using the precursors, triflate, a reaction with F18 and all the way to uh, give the FDG. Yield in this case is almost uh, 70%. We all know that FDG has a limitation. It's non-specific, uptake in inflammatory lesion, and may result in false positive results. FDG also have high physiological uptake in organs, such as the brain, also a reduction in cellular uh, uptake in hyperglycemia. Therefore, a variety of PET radio pharmaceuticals were developed, and of course we cannot talk about all these radio tracers uh, that was developed, but we will be limiting ourselves in uh, extensive data on human use and limited human use and promising but no human use if we have time for that. Uh, the next PET radio uh, pharmaceuticals is the fluorodopa. As I have mentioned earlier, that this PET, uh, the F-dopa, is produced using uh, an approved method by FDA, but unfortunately it produces uh, less uh, low specific activity. And the production method, uh, as you can see, uh, yield is very low and specific activity is uh, uh, less than one curie per millimole. And uh, fortunately you can use automated system to produce it, but nowadays there is a new method that can produce it in a higher quantity and it's non-carrier added. The other PET radio pharmaceutical is fluorothymidine. Fluorothymidine is uh, used for cell proliferation through thymidine kinase, and uh, FLT is more sensitive than FDG in evaluating recurrence of high-grade gliomas and the treatment uh, and monitoring. Uh, the same way it can be produced using uh, a synthesizer, an automated system. Yield is very good and uh, high radiochemical purity but also there is a limitation for this radio tracer and uh, it has very high uptake in the liver. 
Sodium fluoride, which is also another FDA-approved uh, radiopharmaceuticals, it uh, has a better bond to soft tissue uptake ratio compared to uh, technetium uh, diphosphonate, and it's becoming the standard for clinical bone scanning. The, the way to produce uh, sodium, uh, sodium fluoride is really easy. As instead of using the sodium fluoride to produce FDG, you can just use it as it is after uh, passing through 0.22 micron filter. Fluoroethyl L-tyrosine or uh, F18 uh, FET is one of the tyrosine analog and uh, it accumulates in cells and allow assessment of more specific uptake in uh, tumors, especially in uh, gliomas co in comparison with the FDG and you can see here, uh, oops, this is the FDG uh, of the glioma patient and this is using uh, FET. Production method is really uh, simple and straightforward. You can produce it in 60% radiochemical chemical yield and uh, in uh, less than 70 minutes, but also there is a limitation. It's not uh, sufficiently specific for distinction between uh, non-neoplastic lesion and malignant gliomas. Uh, another uh, PET radiopharmaceutical is F18 fluorocholine, and this one is recently approved in the United States by FDA, and it is approved only in uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, for uh, uh, the diagnosis of uh, prostate cancer. Uh, again, the production is uh, very straightforward and it can be used using automation uh, system. Yield is very, is very good and uh, purity is very high, but also there is a limitation for this radio tracer, which is the high uptake in the liver. Uh, Fluoromesodinizole, which is called Fmizo. Fmizo is a non-invasive tumor uh, hypoxia agent, and uh, the way for uh, production of this one, this radio tracer is uh, straightforward, and it takes like uh, 40 minutes to produce it. However, this uh, radio tracer is, has uh, a limitation. The clearance from the body is very slow. It's more than two hours, so you cannot image before then before two hours. Therefore, they came up with a new radio tracers called F18 FASA. And uh, F18 FASA is another hypoxic uh, tracer. And it was successfully used, and this has shown to be superior to the F meso. The production is almost the same. Uh, the fluorobeta estradiol, uh, it's shown to be potential for quantifying estrogen receptors in breast cancer for both primary tumor and metastasis. Uh, the way of production of this radio tracer is, uh, is straightforward and simple, and it can be uh, also performed using uh, chemistry boxes. Yield is very high, and the synthesis time is less than 50 minutes, but also it has a limitation since 30 to 40 percent of the breast cancer do not, uh, do not express estrogen uh, receptors. Again, we're going to go with uh, another ma uh, male uh, hormones, which is uh, the fluorodihydrotestosterone which is used for uh, prostate uh, detection. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The production of this one is again straightforward and it can be produced in less than 50 minutes with a high radiochemical yield and the purity is always high. The limitation tend to bite additional steroids uh, receptors. F18 flumazenil, uh, this uh, radio tracer is a promising radio pharmaceuticals for providing non-invasive evaluation of benzodiazepine receptors in uh, the brain, especially with patients suffering from epilepsy. And the production of this radio tracer is uh, also a straightforward and it can be used using a chemistry box. And you can see here the images using a human and images using a uh, monkey. Uh, This is another radio tracer. It has a very long name, but I will call it F18 FPCIT. It's a promising radio pharmaceutical for dopamine transporting imaging, which is suitable for assessing the severity of Parkinson's disease. And it's showing a very good images here, and the production of this radio tracer is also straightforward. Another F18 uh, radio tracer is the fluoroanexine uh, 5. Uh, Fluoroanexine 5 is a larger protein and bind high, uh, with high affinity to the cell membrane in the early stages of apoptosis. So this radio tracer, it's used for uh, the measurement of apoptosis. 
uh, in animals, of course, and this might help uh, the personalized medicine using a real-time image of the cell death uh, to monitor disease uh, activity and patient response to treatment. The way to produce this radio tracer is really complicated and it takes almost three hours to produce it and with a, radio, with a low radio uh, chemical yield. That's why it's been replaced uh, by something called F18ML10, which is a 2-methyl malonic acid. And this one is being taken up by IBA and they have a patent on that. And it has shown to be a very useful in uh, quantifying apoptosis. And here are some of the images. Uh, of uh, brain metastasis and after chemotherapy treatment they injected uh, the F18 ML10 and you can see a real-time cell death in the brain. Uh, another radiopharmaceuticals which is recently approved by FDA is the F18 Amivit. Of course we're not going to go through the whole chemical name to it, but Amivit is a promising uh, PET radio tracer for in vivo imaging if amyloid uh, deposition in Alzheimer disease and the distinction from other forms of dementia. These are some of the recent images taken using this radio tracer. The procedure for production of this is a straightforward and it takes like uh, 30 minutes to produce it. 30 to 40 minutes to produce it. Another uh, uh, Alzheimer uh, disease agent is uh, a radio tracer that is developed uh, and it's in clinical trial phase three. It's a flow metamol. Uh, the way to produce it, it's giving you know comparable result with the Amivid. Uh, however, Amivid have received approval from the FDA. This one is still bending. The production of this one is, uh, again, straightforward, and uh, it, they're using a cassette uh, type. Uh, one of other also radio tracer is the F18 VMAT2, uh, which is a promising new PET uh, radio tracer for the in vivo quantification imaging of beta cells, masses, and pancreas. This radio tracer is in uh, clinical trial phase three, and this one with, with uh, Amivid is being developed by, by a company called Avid Radio Pharmaceuticals, which was acquired by Eli Lilly for almost $850 million. Uh, I believe uh, that the Amivid uh, probably is useful for uh, the diagnosis of Alzheimer patient, but I think Eli Lilly have purchased that company because they have new drugs for treatment of Alzheimer, so they want to see, uh, to monitor the treatment effect on patient. Again, this can be used, uh, this can be produced easily in, 20, in 55 minutes and uh, good uh, radiochemical yield. Uh, because F18 radio pharmacy did not have any myocardium uh, radio tracer, so the F18 flow peridase, which is uh, uh, produced by a company called Lenthus, it is still in uh, phase three clinical trial and it's pending the approval. It has shown to be uh, a uh, good uh, cardiac imaging agent and as you can see here from the image uh, it's giving a very good image the way of production of this radio tracer is easy and straightforward and it will enable people to use this one for myocardial imaging instead of having uh, ammonia which is short half-life or the rubidium 70 uh, the rubidium 82 which is also 70 seconds half-life this will give you more time uh, one of other peptide radio pharmaceuticals is the RGD F18 peptide. Uh, of course, it is a peptide. This is the structure of the peptide. And uh, it's been used in oncology for pet imaging uh, to image the integrin targeted radio pharmaceuticals and uh, the angiogenetic tumor as well as some other type of tumor cell, including melanoma, renal cancer, carcinoma, and uh, oncocytoma. The same thing, the production of this is straightforward, however, the yield is 20%. Here we will move to the carbon-11. Of course, we are not going to dwell in carbon-11 because we didn't see that much interest from the physician to work with the carbon-11 uh, except in uh, selected places. Using the C11 CO2, you can produce variety of precursors and you, you can uh, radio label variety of radio tracers uh, 
like the way using with uh, F-18. One of the carbon-11 radiotracers are the C-11 uh, raclopirides, which is a dopamine or D2 receptor uh, antagonist, and uh, it's used for quantification of the dopamine D2 receptors. The, all the production method for the C11 are uh, almost similar and uh, yield here is not a factor because you are using it in a single dose and probably chance of transporting to other uh, center is really limited. Uh, carbon 11 n methyl uh, spiperidol, uh, it's also another uh, imaging agent for uh, dopaminergic D2 receptors. Uh, uh, it's, it's a very old uh, radio tracers and uh, not too many people are using it, but I just mention it here for the sake of mentioning it. Carbon-11 uh, hydrox, uh, hydroxyphenidrine, which is a uh, norphenidrine analog that accumulates in nerves terminal and can be used for non-invasive evaluation of sympathetic neuronal integrity using PET. Again, the way of the production is straightforward. Carbon-11 acetate, which also has some good application, uh, especially when you are using therosphere for the treatment of liver cancer. Uh, Carbon-11 acetate has shown to be a good imaging agent to uh, image the response of the treatment. Carbon-11 L-methionine is a sensitive uh, tracer in tumor detection and it differentiates between B9 and malignant legion with a high sensitivity, sensitivity and specificity and low background activity in normal brain tissues. And you can see it gives a very good sharp images for brain tumor. Carbon-11 C choline, it's similar like the F18 so, uh, choline. Uh, people using F18 choline or uh, C11 choline have shown that F18 choline produce sharper images because of uh, the long half-life of uh, fluorine 18 and the short distance of uh, fluorine 18. Carbon 11 thymidine, it's almost the same as the fluorine 18, but uh, there are two ways of production of uh, carbon 11 thymidine. I'm not going to talk more about this one and it's shown to be very uh, useful in uh, small lung uh, cancer compared with the FDG, carbon 11 flumazenil, which is again another promising radiopharmaceuticals for, uh, <coughs> for the diagnosis of epilepsy and the uh, result would be the same as the fluorine 18. Uh, we're going to skip this one because this uh, carbon uh, dipronyl is for mono uh, amino oxidase and uh, we'll go to the ammonia, which is uh, heavily used in our clinic for the myocardial imaging. The wave production is straightforward. We're using a natural water to produce the ammonia, and it's, you, are, you are getting a very good images here. It has advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages, it's a 10 minutes half-life, excellent myocardial uptake and retention, better image quality, well-validated for quantitative flow and physical uh, exercise application. Disadvantage, it requires a nearby cyclotron. And this is one of the major advantage, disadvantages. O15 water is also another uh, FDA-approved radiopharmacy. It was used for the metabolic oxygen consumption measurement in the heart, tumor, and the necrosis. Uh, O18 water has uh, advantages. Uh, it's nearly 100% extraction a fraction in the myocardium, however, that disadvantage that oxygen-15 activity concentration in the vascular compartment of the myocardium. Uh, Rubidium-82 uh, Rubidium is a generator, uh, and uh, it's a 30 days uh, half-life generator. It can produce uh, uh, Rubidium-82 uh, radio tracer, which is 70 uh, seconds minute, has advantage, excellent myocardial uptake and retention. It can be produced without cyclotron from column uh, generator. However, it has a limitation. One of the limitations is the cost. It, it costs a lot of money. And poor resolution images due to the relatively long positron range uh, in comparison with the ammonia. Gallium-68, everybody now is jumping to Gallium-68 generator. Gallium-68 generator has uh, 271 days, almost nine months half-life, and it can be used uh, without having a, a cyclotron nearby. It's a 68 minutes half-life, generator produce, good imaging characteristic, 
and it, there is a kit available so you can treat it as the technician in your hot lab. Gallium 68 were ready labeled with a variety of radio tracers such as EDTA, citrate, etc., etc. And it was also uh, labeled with a variety of peptide, among them is the somatostatin analog peptide uh, octoretide. And uh, this octoretide uh, was used, uh, was produced using uh, synthesizers and ready-made kit and the yield is 70% and the synthesis time is less than 30 minutes and it has to be it's shown very uh, to be very useful in uh, the management and the diagnosis of uh, a neuroendocrine tumor and also it was used as, as a therapeutic guide for uterium dotatoc or dotatate or lutetium dotatate. Copper 62 and all other copper uh, radioisotopes such as copper 60 or 64 they have uh, similar characteristic and they, are, they have been uh, used for radio labeling of a variety of compounds. One of them is the PTCSM, and it was used for imaging of the heart, and it was uh, shown to be better than the technetium-99 compound. Bromine-75 and 76, I'm not going to talk about this one because lots of people, you know, has abandoned this radio tracers. Uh, ID-124, I see lots of interest using ID-124, especially for the thyroid uh, imaging. The production of ID-124 uh, can be produced in two ways, one using the deuteron, the other one using the proton. And uh, ID-124 uh, ID proved to be a superior diagnostic uh, tool in comparison with uh, the low-dose diagnostic ID-131 or ID-123, and these are the images. ID-124 can be uh, ready labeled using two different methods, direct and indirect method. Indirect method are a bit time consuming, however, you will not have any thyroid uptake uh, after 24 hours and this experiment was performed at our facility. ID-124 has been used to radio label variety of bioactive molecules. One of them is ID-124 MIBG and eventually it was used to radio label some of the antibodies uh, which is which called G250 and this uh, CG250 was used to identify the aggressively renal carcinoma. Uterium 86 is another PET radio uh, nuclide and it was used to resemble the uterium 90 for uh, uh, used in, in treatment of uh, neuroendocrine tumor. Nowadays, people are also uh, interested in zirconium-89, and uh, we are producing zirconium-89 at our facility for research purposes, and uh, we are using it with uh, antibodies, uh, radiolabeling, because uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, uh, have a very slow clearance in the body, and you require long-lived uh, radionuclide. If we have, sometimes I can talk about something that we have developed at our facility. If we don't have, we can stop at here. Shall we? Uh, I'll go to, I'll just skip these ones, which are uh, our work in uh, folate. We have ready labeled uh, folate uh, with fluorine 18, and folate has been shown to be very important in the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. And we have published three publications, and uh, in that regard using uh, fluorine 18 and also we have introduced uh, FDG to the folate and it, we produced this compound in less than 20 minutes and the three publications were listed as the top 20 publication since 2011 uh, published in the field of ovarian cancer by uh, Midline. Uh, as you can see here, uh, these are the two tracers that we produce here. It has a very high uptake in the tumor and low uptake in the abdominal region, which makes it very uh, useful candidate or uh, potential candidate for... Uh, also, we have radio labeled folate with the gallium-68, and uh, we have seen tremendous accumulation. Uh, most, almost 20% of the radioactive activity went to the tumor. So it's also worth to mention that the only uh, radio pharmaceutical that are approved in, in the United States, FDG, ammonia, O15, uh, F18 sodium fluoride, rubidium-82 generator, F18 emivid, C11 choline, and F18 choline. But these things must be approved by your national regulatory body. 
PET and cancer. In the GCC, we are registering almost 15,000 new cases in cancer. This will tell us that PET will grow, and uh, the future of PET as imaging modality is bright and will be brighter if we develop uh, the specificity and the sensitivity. How do we develop the specificity? By developing a new PET radio, uh, a new radio tracer based upon biochemistry and pharmacology. It's not an easy. We have an obstacles from the regulatory body and the, from com the commercial uh, intensity through uh, the patent and also improve the scanner uh, like uh, detectors. I'm sure with all this improvement, we have been taken from the yesterday's medicine to the tomorrow's medicine, which is molecular medicine or personalized medicine. Finally, I would like to share with you this image, which I learned a lot from it. What I learned is it's important to be in the top, but more important to maintain it. Thank you very much for your careful listening.